I have notes, so you know this must be important. And it is. We get questions all the time by people asking on our channel, in our VIP, everywhere. How do I know how much sugar to add? How do I know how much honey? How do I know how much of this? Can I use brown sugar? Can I use Muscovado sugar? Can I use turbinado sugar? What about molasses? You know what? Every one of those things is a perfectly fine thing to use in your brew to add to the fermentables, the things that make things ferment and create alcohol. But they all have a little bit of a difference in how they work, and it confuses people. Now, one caveat to this. I do realize that as you add more sugars or honey or whatever into the same volume, you are in fact changing that volume. Like if you had, you know, enough to make one gallon with one pound and then you added two pounds of sugar, yes, it is a little bit more volume and it does change things. This is a rough guide, okay? Just rough guide, great to get you started. Don't trust this 100%, but it gets you going. It gives, gives you an idea. There's your caveat. Now let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna discuss is, one of the things that we use a lot and a lot of people ask about is juices. Now, juices have a range, okay? In general, a juice is gonna be 0 0.040 to 0 0.065 gravity. Plain and simple, depends on the juice, you have to check, there's no other way to know. The next most common thing used for fermentation is plain old white table sugar. That generally gives a 0 0.046 gravity per pound of sugar in a gallon of must. Now that doesn't mean a gallon of water and a pound of sugar. It literally means add your sugar, fill water to a gallon. In there, that should be about 1.046. You're probably wondering where I got the one from. Let me explain that. The 0 0.046 is the sugar itself. The 1.000 is actually the water because water has a neutral density. It's 1.000. So that 0.046 is adding to the neutral density of water, making it 1.046. So all the numbers that I'm gonna talk about from here forward are adding to the neutral density of water, where the juice is, it's really 1.040 to 1.065, okay? Because it is more dense than water. So I sort of misspoke when I said it that way. Just go with me here. A lot of people ask if brown sugar and muscovado sugar, or turbinado sugar are different than plain white sugar. And everything that I've researched says, no, they're not. Now I'm calling it 0 0.046. Many people say 0 0.045 for sugars. That one point, one, one thousandth of a point, really doesn't make that much difference, okay? Just to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter. So 46, 45, either way, you're good. But again, that would be 1.046 in a gallon for one pound. Next on the list is corn sugar, also known as dextrose. That's actually a little bit lower. It's 0 0.042 per pound in a gallon. We can just say PPG, per pound per gallon. That's the easiest way to do that. And it's kind of a commonly accepted term. So we're gonna say it that way. Next on the list is honey. Now, honey does have a little bit of a range depending on the manufacturer and where you got it from and how long they let it sit but they do have certain requirements in order for it to be honey and to be kind of stable. In general, honey is about 0 0.035, people say PPG. I call it gravity, but really it's PPG, 0 0.035 per pound per gallon. Another common one that people ask about is molasses. Now, while I don't actually prefer the taste of fermented molasses, it is actually much like honey for its PPG rating. It's 0 0.035, just like honey, but it does have a range still. Maple syrup, very common. Lots of people like to ferment maple syrup and it's similar to honey, but not necessarily. Now we're talking about real maple syrup here, not the high fructose corn syrup, pancake syrup stuff. We're talking about real actual maple syrup. There is a variance. I've heard as low as 0 0.025, but that's kind of rare. Usually it's 0 0.030 to about 0 0.035. That seems to be the uh, general range. You may just want to test yours to be sure. And then something that we've used on the show is date syrup. And that one works a lot like maple syrup. It has quite a bit of variance. It's thicker than maple syrup, which is strange, but there's less sugars in it. And that's usually about 0 0.030 to 0 0.035. The one we used, I believe it came to like 0 0.032, uh, but they do actually have a little bit of variance. Some other things that you might wanna try fermenting with that have sugars in them are fruits. Now, when you start adding fruits, you have to work a little bit in theory because here's the thing, like berries, for instance, a whole pound of berries might only add six or eight points of gravity to your must. It really doesn't add that much. Whereas like um, grapes, 
can be higher depending on the type of grape. So fruit, you really need to do the research, use a little Google foo. That means going on Google and looking it up and find out what is the amount of sugars that they have per pound. And it's very, very simple. Let me, let me give you an example. Let's say I go on the internet and I'm using a fruit, whatever the fruit happens to be. And I know that if I put a pound of this fruit in, it's going to be 250 or so, 270 or so grams of sugars in that pound. That's about half a pound of sugars, right? So if I know that white sugar, because that's what we're comparing it to, white sugar at that point. If I know that white sugar is 0.046, and I used half of that, I know it's gonna give me 0.023. So it's actually pretty simple, even when you're using whole fruits and things like that, to kind of get a rough idea of about how much it's going to add. So every once in a while, we'll get someone that, you know, oh, I put in a pound of strawberries because I wanted to make wine. Okay, a pound of strawberries in a gallon is really only gonna give you like six to eight points. So it's like a 1.006 or 1.008, whereas a pound of peaches, let's say, is gonna be much, much higher than that. Every fruit is a little bit different. Best to look it up and find out. I have yet to see one fruit that really did have half a pound of sugars in a pound. It just, they don't really do that. Going back to that caveat for just a moment, as you add more volume of these sugars, you have less volume of water. Therefore, you are in fact changing that gravity by more as you add more of each ingredient. So that's why I say this is a guideline. One, two, three pounds, it's not changing it that much, five to 10 points. Once you start adding a lot more, like four, five, six pounds, which isn't really recommended in a gallon anyway, that's when it significantly changes the concentration levels and would totally throw off all of these guidelines completely. But that's the gist of sugars in your brews. Now, remember, if you're doing one pound in one gallon, that means if you're gonna make five gallons, you need five pounds. Most things scale up pretty easily. Like I always say, to scale up your brew from one gallon to three gallons or five gallons, multiply by however many number of gallons you're making and just Double the yeast if we only used half a packet or use a full packet of yeast for three gallons and five gallons, you're good to go. Hopefully this helped. If you guys have any questions or if there's a sugar that I might not have touched on because I tried to find the most common ones, but I'm sure there's more out there, ask away in the comments. I'll be sure to help you out and let you know what I find. In the meantime though, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.